do the parade? They're doing a parade, aren't they? Good morning. Welcome to everyone in our physical sanctuary and also our digital sanctuary. This is Palm Sunday. Yes, Hosanna, Hosanna. Well, this is the day the Lord has made. What shall we do? Rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, church. Please join with me this morning in our call of worship. We come to prepare for the holiest of weeks. Jesus leads us through this week and we will follow, for he is the life we long for. He is the word who sustains us. Setting aside all power, glory, and might, he comes, modeling humility and obedience for all of us. Hosanna. Hosanna, blessed is the one who brings us the kingdom of God. At this time, would you please stand as you're comfortable and we'll join in our processional. We'll sing number 278 out of our hymnal, Hosanna, loud Hosanna. Be seated.
Church, good morning on this blessed Palm Sunday morning. Pastor Kimberly and all the people here at Lawrence United Methodist Church warmly welcome each and every one of you. If you're passing through, our prayers remain for your safe journey. And what we want you to know is that whenever you are in the area, you're warmly welcomed and encouraged to worship with us here at Lawrence United Methodist Church. For we are a worship center that enters to worship and leaves to serve. We kindly ask that you review all the announcements you receive in our beacon, the Sunday morning printed announcements, as well as the electronic kingdom news. Please be mindful of deadlines as they are always needed for our planning purposes. Are there any first time visitors here with us this morning? We're blessed whether you're in the sanctuary or whether you're viewing us digitally this morning. Special congratulations are extended to first time great grandparents, Mark and Vicki Crittenden, on the birth of Nova and Shay, weighing in at six pounds and nine ounces. Amen. Amen. Blessed. Amen. This week, we wish a happy birthday to Jackson Vaught, 329, Chloe New, 322, and Amelia Felty, 331. As Pastor Kimberly says, you've made another trip around the sun. For Women's History Month, today we feature Jarena Lee, the nation's first African-American woman preacher and the first woman to be recognized as an evangelist in the male-dominated African Methodist Episcopal Church. Bishop Richard Allen, founder of the AME Church, refused to permit her to preach because female ministers were banned. These challenges that she faced caused her to experience depression and even consider suicide. However, one Sunday morning, when a guest speaker was struggling with his message, she took over and delivered her own sermon. The bishop was so impressed with this that he then publicly endorsed her. Her career spanned three decades. She then said, it should be remembered that nothing is impossible with God. And why should it be thought impossible or improper for a woman to preach? She defied both social barriers and traditional gender roles. Please be blessed.
Let us pray. Lord, we exalt and honor you. You are more than worthy of being praised. Lord, open our hearts and minds to the power of the Holy Spirit as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed. May we hear what you say to us today. Pour out your gifts of the Holy Spirit on us today. Fill us, Lord, that regardless of our age, race, gender, or backgrounds, others will look at us and see you. Lord, give us a clean heart and a loving heart and a heart that we may worship and serve you. We pray for the needs of our church. We pray for the physical and financial growth of our church. We also pray for the spiritual growth and health of our church. Lord, there's so much that the church is dealing with today. Let this church be a place of refuge and strength. As it says in Psalms 91 2, that God is our refuge and strength, and we are to put our trust in him. We pray that the Holy Spirit will remove anything that keeps us from serving you. Remove, re, remove anything that keeps us from worshiping you. Lord, there are so many that need your healing grace, your healing touch. May we be a praying church, as it says in James 5, 16. Fervent prayer of a righteous man accomplished much. May we pray, as it says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 13, that we will pray without ceasing. Lord we, may, <clears throat> Lord, we pray for our sick and shut in. Lord, thank you for social media, which, we, which has allowed us to stay connected. May they know that we serve a loving God, a compassionate God, a God that, God that can feel our pain and heal our hurt. Lord, we pay, pray for our pastor. We pray for her health and strength as she continuously serves your people. She truly is a woman of God for the people of God. Thank you for the word that you have given us, given her to give us today. Lord, we thank you for Palm Sunday as Jesus came in on a white horse leading the parade and the people were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, that horse meant peace. Peace I bring for you, although I know what lies ahead for me. Now let us say the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God loves. Now let us smile. Some of you are laughing, okay? Now let us read. So let each one give as he proposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity. What a great day it is and going to be, okay? And uh, we're all going to be involved in it. You know, I was uh, talking to my grandson. Uh, actually, this was last year about uh, Palm Sunday, you know, trying to get him to understand it and so forth. So we come home with these, uh, with these palms, and he's looking and asking, well, what is that? What's that all about and so forth? And I explained, I said, well, this is what we did when, uh, uh, when Jesus uh, came in. We laid 
uh, song, uh, palms down uh, for him. And he looked, because he was home at the time with a sore throat. And he looked and said, well, dad, gone, Papa. The time that I miss church, Jesus shows up. <laughs> but anyway, that's, I, I don't know. He, I think he got to understand it up Palm Sunday, though. But because you give, Lawrence United Methodists can give. Ushers, thank you for receiving our tithes and offering. Because God loves. Go Purdue. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to give of our time, our talents, and our financial resources. May these gifts be used for the furthering of your kingdom. May these gifts be used in the ministries of our church, 
ministry to our community, and ministry to the world. May your word go forth and not return void or empty without accomplishing great things with your people for your people. Lord, thank you for receiving our tithes and offerings. And let us all say, Amen. 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 Good morning. How's everyone? Uh, oh my. Before I, we talk about Palm Sunday, I want to recognize two more youths and their excellence in their academics. Um, Henry, who's this guy over here sitting in front, and he, he, he doesn't, he's a little shy. But I want everybody to know he made all A's this year so far, and he's tested in his gifted and talented. That's, that's awesome, Henry. And James, can you kind of raise your hand? Can you do that for me? 
Thank you. James also has gotten all A's this year. Uh, second grade, um, he took the third grade reading test and he got a perfect score. And he was so proud, he decided to cook breakfast for everybody yesterday. Wasn't that nice? <laughs> Great job, Henry and James. Why do you think I kind of told us to lay out the palms like a path? Anybody? Okay. What did Jesus do when they came into Israel? He told two disciples to... Hosanna? Well, you're jumping the gun. He asked two of the disciples to get something. He said there will be a colt and a donkey, right, tied up. All right? And he told the disciples where to find the animals. And, and, and they found the animals. And they brought the donkey back. They brought the animals back. And then what did Jesus do? Okay, before Jesus did anything... They, the disciples put, like, cloaks, cloth, onto the donkey. And what did Jesus do? You, know, no, no. you, you sure? You know, okay. Anybody have an idea? What did Jesus do? Did he walk along with the donkey? No, he didn't walk with the donkey. He got onto the donkey, all right? All right? And why do you think he picked a, a donkey and not a big steed? Is Jesus a real proudful guy? I'm the son of God. Is he, a big, is he proudful or is he humble? Humble. So what, what, how, how can you find, I mean, how, I mean, the more to be humble, you would, you would ride a donkey, right? Something, a humble animal. A meek animal, right? Okay, so that's why he went with a donkey. And then what did the people do as he came into J Jerusalem? Yes. The palms, yeah. They, have, they waved the palms and they laid down the palms as a path for him to coming into Israel, right? And they were shouting Hosanna. And what else were they shouting? We just sang it about, we just sang it. You know, blessed is the king, right? You know, the people believed, and then by Friday, what happened? They're all excited. On, su on Sunday, he comes in, and by Friday, they're saying what? No, they're not saying Hosanna anymore. No, they're saying crucify, right? But that's the way it had to be, right? That's the way it has to be in order for him, for him to take our sins, right? For we to be forgiven, all right? So think about this week. Shout hosannas, and then remember what we shouted on Friday. Dear Lord, thank you for these children. Thank you for their open minds, their open hearts, and they want to be closer to you, and Lord, so much more about you. And in Jesus' name, we all say, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Grand Rising Church. The journey of Lent is an exodus. An exodus is from an exodus from slavery to freedom. These 40 days correspond to the 40 years that God's people trekked 
through the desert to return to their homeland. How difficult it was to leave Egypt. It was more difficult for God's people to leave Egypt of the heart. That Egypt they carried within them than to leave the Egypt, the land of Egypt. It is hard to leave Egypt behind. During their journey, there was an ever-present temptation to yearn for leaks, to turn back, to cling to memories of the past or this or that idol. So, it is with us, our journey back to God is blocked by our unhealthy attachments, held back by the seductive snares of our sins and being tempted by the evil one who wants to keep us away from God. Let us be reminded in this Lent season of the grace that has been granted by God through Jesus Christ that takes away the guilt and shame of sin as we become new in him, our Lord. The scripture lesson this morning is from Psalm 118, verses 19 through 29, and John chapter 12, verses 12 through 16. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. This is the word of the Lord. Bless the Lord. I have to show you something interesting before I pray, because this makes me happy. This is why I love the word of God so so, so very much, and how God allows us to pay attention to some things. So 
allow me to pray. Father, I thank you now. And I'm so excited. Because Jesus came to free us up. He came so that we might live again. He came so that all might know you. He came because he loved us. And because he loved us, it allows us to love one another. So we thank you for opening our ears to hear and our hearts to receive. Amen. So I'm real excited about this because in my quiet time in my prayer time and as I'm in the parsonage and I'm sitting on the floor in my prayer room God just thought talking to me about scriptures and so in Luke here we see here in Luke it is chapter one Jesus birth is foretold I want you to pay attention to some things when Elizabeth was six months pregnant God sent an angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a city of Galilee, to a virgin who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David's house. And the virgin's name was Mary. And when the angel came to her, watch this now, the angel said to her, rejoice, you found favor. But not only did the angel tell her, rejoice, you have found favor, the angel also said to her, don't be afraid, baby girl. Don't you be afraid. Now some 30 years later, this is what I love about God. 30 years later, as the scriptures was read, it was written, Jesus found on a young donkey and sat on it, just as it was said 30 years ago, Rejoice, people of God, and don't be afraid. Do you not see how the scriptures tie in? I just want to share that with you to understand that when you are reading scriptures, these things ought to just kind of pop out at you. What was said, so really what I'm trying to say is that that was spoken over his life came to pass 30 years ago. The angel told Mary, look, don't be afraid. Just go to rejoicing. 30 years later, he comes in on a donkey. Don't be afraid. You just ought to rejoice. 30 years later. What am I saying? It ain't going to happen overnight for us. But rejoice. I just wanted to share that with y'all. Okay? Y'all. That's the joy of the thing, y'all. But we'll go into the message. I'm so excited about this message. What has caused us to change? Change our hearts, change our minds, change our statues, just change, right? Life itself is described as a process of change. We go from young to old. We have a new baby in our church, baby Nova Ann, and her grandparents say they old, but they not, they young. But we go from young to old, from season to season. We go from winter to spring to summer to fall to autumn, however you want to say it, fall or autumn. It's changing from employment to retirement, Ms. Donna. Retirement from relationship changes. And of course, we got this technology. We got this technology, this AI. And I love in the book of Ecclesiastes when Solomon talks about in chapter 3, and it reminds us that things are always changing in the world. But despite all of the changes, he tells us that God never changes. I'm reminded in my spirit as I sit and pray that God also desires a drastic change from us as well. A change that requires us to change our hearts from being who we are, living in sin, doing wrong, to calling to repentance. And from repentance, the change of outward obedience. There's a song that we sing, and you all have heard it. Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change 
in our lives. I'm excited about the many reasons of this triumphant entry into Jerusalem because it does fulfill the prophecy and it recognizes Jesus' role as the way is prepared in the events that would lead up to his death and resurrection. The people desired a king because they wanted to be delivered. Mm. They were under the bondage of Roman Empire. There was harsh treatment. And Jesus would ride in on this donkey. They sang a song in the black community, if you want to ride, come ride the white horse. But Jesus came in on a donkey, meaning that he wasn't thinking about his kingdom lordship. He was humble. He was lowly. He was already living an example of how we are to live. The prophecy of Zechariah 9 and 9 talks about rejoicing greatly here again that echoes what Luke and echoes what is saying in John that we ought to rejoice because your king is coming. Why don't you go ahead and place those cloaks and those palms because I want you to understand that when they placed the cloaks and the, the cloaks and the palms it was for someone of ruler status. And they would do that for high officials in that culture. It was paramount that they recognized the ruler. But Jesus, when he comes, he brings attention and the city gets stirred up. In fact, if you really look at this, he made the religious leaders mad. That's what all this really was about. The religious leaders really didn't have the power they thought they had. And so it was the religious leaders that really led the mob. I want you to understand that. It wasn't just the people in the pews. It was religious leaders who were supposed to have the knowledge of the law that, read the mob, that led the mob. And so the people, the religious leaders get upset because he's now in this town and he's stirring up some stuff. And the people shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna, son of David. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus opens up and declares to the people that I am the Messiah. I am the king. I'm the one that you have been waiting on. I'm the one who can deliver you. I'm the one that's going to bring you out. But he says the bigger picture, beloved family, is that I'm the one that is going to meet your spiritual needs. So not only your physical need because you're under stress with this Roman government. But I'm going to meet your spiritual need. I'm going to deliver you. And so this king, our Lord and Savior, he came to conquer with love, with grace and forgiveness. And he came to sacrifice his own life. This long-awaited Messiah this king of Israel, but not just the king of Israel, our king of kings, our Lord of lords, for all mankind. He didn't come just for the blacks. He didn't come just for the whites. He didn't come for the Arabs. He didn't come just for the Hispanic. The scripture says he came for all mankind, to forgive all mankind to show all mankind grace, to show all mankind true love. How is it then that they could praise Jesus, Hosanna, Hosanna, in the following few days? I don't want you anymore. In essence, beloved family, Hosanna, Hosanna simply means that we have human dependency for divine mercy. Hosanna, Hosanna. I'm in situations, I'm in circumstances, and God, will you just intervene? And so they were excited about Jesus coming, the long-awaited Messiah. They longed to experience the promise and the joy that was now being available to them because of their circumstances and situations. They realized chance of choir that life is not doom or gloom. 
and where it was dim, there's now light. The people, the people. It surprises me. It surprises me that this long waited Messiah, the people whom God had been with, the people who had prayed to God in Psalms 118. Here's what they said. Save us, O Lord. We are praying to you. We've had no success. Psalms 118. We've had no victory. We're saying to you, save us so that you may give us victory. These people, our people, many of them never experienced success. What they experienced was burdens. What they experienced was depression. What they experienced was oppression. What they experienced was hardship. But it's something about them saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. You are our Lord in the highest. They were saying, come and deliver us from ruin. Come and deliver us from harm. And come and deliver us from the great loss. They were seeking salvation. Because at one time, salvation was a mystery to them. As well, many times, it's been a mystery to us. But now this salvation that they longed for and that they needed was now being revealed. That was the plan from the foundation in the first place. The people needed miracles. They needed miracles. And Jesus comes in. Miracles are one of the many things that told us and told them that he truly was the son of God and is the son of God and their savior and ours. According to the Bible, if you and I would just do our research, and I did it for you, before he made his entrance, he did 39 miracles before his crucifixion. 39. So according to John 20, it says, and now then Jesus did many miracles in the presence of his disciples, which are not even written in the book. That's John 20. But these have been written, these miracles that we're going to talk about has been written so that you and I might believe that he truly is the son of God. So how is it that Jesus had done all these miracles, signs, and wonders, Madam Chair. And the people end up by the next week saying, we're done with you. You remember that song, you just keep on using me until you use me up. Y'all remember that song, right? It's a song. So the same people that he did these miracles for, the same people that had been delivered, the same people that called out, all of a sudden had a change of mind and a change of heart. And they forget and forgot what he had done. I cannot say, Hosanna, Hosanna, save me, and turn around and say, kill him, now I'm done. I got what I need. I got just what I wanted, and we're done. That is just like us today. We change our minds so quickly. We in and out of love so quickly. We friends one day, we fall out the next day. That's humans. But it causes me in my mind to question, how can we forget about the one who came to save us? How can we forget about the one who came to bless us? How can we forget about the one, this wonderful counselor, this prince of peace, this everlasting father, a son has been given, the anointed one, the mighty hand of God. How can I welcome you in my life and hate you at the same time? Because that's what was happening. 
He told the religious leaders of their hypocrisy. See, that's why they got mad. Oh, yeah, it's there. The reason why the religious leader led the mob is because he called them hypocrites. And what he was saying was, you're not taking your own word. You want them to do something that you're not doing. I can't ask you to pay tithes and offerings if I don't pay. I can't ask you to sow a seed and pledge if I don't sow a seed, right? So Jesus was calling them on it, basically. He calls them hypocrites. And they got angry with that. And then he declared that he was God, the son of God. And they taunted, blasphemous. So it was the religious leaders, hear me, that wanted him dead. It was those ones that thought they had the power to be. It was the ones that thought that they knew the law. It was the one that wanted to keep the people down. They didn't want the people to be free of diseases. They didn't want the people to be free of demons. They didn't want the people to be liberated and free to worship. It was them that wanted him dead. But I love the fact that death could not keep him in the ground. Jesus, because he came triumphantly, he understood that everybody was not going to be happy. He understood that. I want to help you understand why the religious leaders started getting angry. Don't get this thing twisted. Because the moment you give your life to Christ, guess what? You got a target on your back. Enemy comes after you. So you say, well, Pastor Kimberly, he did 39 miracles? Yes, he did. In his short span of 33 years, in that short span of his ministry start, miracle number one, the water into wine. Terry, I need my wine, okay? Water in the wine. He did it. The wedding of Canaan. He reveals that he would heal a royal official's daughter in John chapter 4. Before they even knew who he was. What about the catching of the many fish? I done fished all night. It ain't no fish. I want you to cast your net over there. He, fished, he told them, say, if you cast your net over here, you're going to have so many fish. That's in Luke chapter 4. They didn't like the fact that he cast a demon out of a man on the Sabbath in the church. That's Mark chapter 1. So he made some people very angry. He did. Peter's mother-in-law was healed. She had a high fever and she was healed. A man of leprosy was healed. And Matthew, you remember in the Old Testament, let me help you understand, even in the Old Testament when he told Moses, Moses, put your hand in your chest. He wanted to show Moses that I am God. Moses, put your hand in your chest. Moses put his hand in his chest. He said, now pull your hand out, Moses. Moses pulled his hand out. And there was leprosy on his hands and then he said Moses put your hand back in your chest Moses did it when Moses put his hands out he was healed he said I'm just trying to show you Moses that I'm God that's all I'm trying to do Moses is show you so he was he, people were upset because he was healing they were doing things the religious leaders could not do the things that Jesus did and this is why they were leading the mob to crucify him the son of Nan's widow is resurrected from the dead in Luke chapter 7. But let me help you understand, beloved sisters and brothers, my family member, this, it was three times that the Lord restored life from somebody that was dead. <laughs> Make it four because he restored mine. Make it five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten because he restored yours too. Matthew also recounts a man who could not speak. And after his encounter with Jesus, demons came out and the man began to speak. That's Matthew chapter 9. So you see, this is why 
these things had to happen. This is why they were raising the palm. This is why they were laying the path out because they said, I've been down too long. I've been spiritually sick too long. I've been physically ailment too long. You are the promised one. You are the one that we've been waiting on. You are the one that Isaiah spoke about. You are the one that was spoken in the book of Mark. You are the one that we don't have to be afraid. We can just greatly rejoice. You are the one that came to save the people from their sin. See, there was a system that wanted to keep the people down. And the people, the system was religious leaders. But Jesus said, I came not only to heal you physically, but to heal you spiritually. In other words, in other words, in other words, somebody, my dear sister from Mississippi, Jesus said, I came to overturn this system by paying with my life. I want to ask you what caused you to change. You've seen God do so much in your life. Don't change now. You've seen God deliver you and heal you and set you free from stuff that is going on in your mind. Because sometimes, let me just tell y'all something, your mind will play some tricks on you. The NAACP say a mind is a terrible thing to waste. And every now and then we get some things in our mind and our mind begin to talk to us and to tell us what God has not said about us. Don't change your mind. Remember who delivered you. Remember how you cried out in the midnight hour. Remember how you said, God, I need you. I saw something on TikTok a while back, and the girl said, the only thing I can say this morning in my prayer is, God, I need you. That's what they were saying when they was raising the palm. Hosanna, Hosanna. I need you. I need human divine intervention in my human illness, in my human sickness. God, I need you. Don't change on God now. He done brought you from a mighty long ways. Church, he done brought us from a mighty long ways. We've been down plenty of times in finances, but the church is still standing because somebody is praying, we need you every hour. Many of us have been on the brinks of COVID and death. And somebody was crying out, God, I need you. Many of our children have gotten into circumstances and situations. And because of your prayers and the prayers that mama prayed and the prayers that grandmama prayed and the prayers that churches prayed, our children came out. Don't you change your mind on God now. You're too blessed to be stressed. You're too anointed to be disappointed. And you're too equipped to be whipped. They changed their mind. Mama Nina, they changed their mind. Out of all the things that he had did for them, they allowed a religious person who thought they knew the law, but he said, I came to fulfill the law. You don't get this thing twisted. I can't change my mind. I can't turn around now. God has brought me too far. God has brought you too far. God has brought this church too far. With many churches closing in United Methodist and Lawrence is still standing. The hand of God is still on Lawrence United Methodist Church. Oh, you can clap right there. Don't turn around now. Don't change your mind. Don't change your mind. Don't you change your mind. It may not be going the way you think it ought to go, but don't you change your mind. The angel told Mary, just go to rejoicing. 30 years later, it is written, rejoice and don't be afraid. So we're going to have some trying times. We're going to have some troubled times. But he said, I came that none of us be lost. Come on and stand to your feet. Who caused you to change your mind? I can't understand, Madam Chair of SPPRC, people that have grown up in the church of God and she and choose another faith like Muslim. Don't change your mind. I can't understand with all that we know of scripture and yet, I hear people say in meetings, I don't even know if God's real. 
don't you change your mind. The moment you change your mind, the moment that's when I need you to say, well, let me go find the scriptures. Let me go check this thing out for myself. Because the same miracles that he did back then, he doing the miracles now. Huh? Just go to the hospital room and see how many people being discharged. Somebody being healed. Oh, you being discharged today. Follow up with your doctor. If God ain't doing it. He's doing it. He's still in the healing business. He's still in the blessing business. He's still in recovery. Because many of us, according to Revelation, we still straddling the fence. We don't know if we're hot or cold. But he said, I'm the God of recovery. Don't worry about seven steps. I am the God of recovery. I am the God that healeth thee. And I love how he came in on that donkey. I'm not coming in because I know who I am, King of kings and Lord of lords. But I just want to show you humility. I want to show you that it's okay to be humble. I want to show you. Don't you forget what I've done for you. They're going to lead a mob against me. And some of you are going to change your mind about me. And some of you who I've healed, who I've touched, who I've delivered. You was down for the count. But I came in with a touch. I came in with some spit. I came in and spoke. And one man said, you know what? I don't want you to go to my house. You ain't worthy to come in my house. He said, you a man of great faith because you recognize my authority. So I ain't got to go to your house. Let me just speak. Heal it. What am I saying? Don't change your mind. I don't care what it looks like. Finance team, I don't care what it looks like. Don't you change your mind. God did not change his mind. That's what Solomon said. Everything is changing. Quincy Jones had a song. Everything must change. Nothing stays the same. Everyone, the winter becomes the spring. And the song, and then he says the harming birds do fly. Everything changes. But do not change your mind about God. Don't you let nobody change your mind about leaving your church. Don't you let nobody get in your ear gate and talk about your church. Don't you do it. Because that's what the religious leaders did. And they led our Lord and Savior to Calvary Cross. And just for the record, so that you will know that he didn't change his mind. Even until the cross, forgive him. This thing hurt, but I ain't changing my mind. It was for you and I that he died. Father, I thank you now for this word. Jesus, you've done so many miracles. We can trace them back from the beginning of the wedding in Canaan. We can trace it all the way through Calvary's cross. Help us not to be like your last children, God. Help us not to change our minds. It's hard sometimes, God. Don't change your mind. I can't take it no more, God. We can't take it no more, God. We've had enough stress. We've had enough strife. We've had enough. God, life is beating us down. Don't change your mind. I am the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Lo, I am with you always. Don't change your mind. I am with you. I am carrying you. I am sustaining you. I'm holding you up. I'm providing for you. I'm giving you all that you need, even life itself. Don't change your mind. I'm with you. I am the one that will bring you peace. When there is no peace, I am the one that heals your body when it's racking with pain. I understand about the diagnosis, but I'm God. I'm able to heal. I'm able to resurrect the walking dead. That's who I am. 
Don't change your mind. Don't let nobody change your mind about the God that you serve. He's been too good to us. And so, Lord, I thank you now that if we have a lax in judgment, if we have forgotten, forgive us. Forgive us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. There's an African song that said, I ain't going to let nobody turn me round, turn me round, turn me round. I ain't going to let nobody turn me wild. I'm going to keep on walking. I'm going to keep on talking. I'm going to keep on going toward heaven's highway. The song was saying, I'm not changing. The pressure may come, but we're not going to change. The heat may come on us, Lawrence, but we're not going to change. We in it to win it. And so, Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you would, please stay standing as you're comfortable, and we'll join in our closing hymn. We'll sing number 277 out of our hymnal. Tell me the stories of Jesus. May the glory of our King give you strength and excite you with reasons to worship this weekend, week. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance to you and give you peace. And let us all say, Amen. Amen.